Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing this painting. And again, we're going to be using hot press paper and I'll be showing you the different techniques I use with um, pen and ink. So I'm going to be showing you the benefits of using hot press paper. You can see it's a smooth surface. So that said, let's jump straight into the video. Now you can see I've already um, made a start on the ink sort of line work. Um, I didn't want to record this, I did this off camera because I didn't want to take too much time. And the first thing I wanted to do is get rid of this line that I left um, coming down from the building on the front um, into the sort of um, shrubbery. And just, just touching up here, I just wanted to show you a little bit of the work that I needed to do um, just to get some more final details on the pen sketch itself. So this is really the um, most sort of time consuming or more complicated part of the painting, but it is quite straightforward. Once you got these lines, it's almost like um, a colouring book. And um, for those who like to colour in as they were kids, um, it's just exactly the same sort of thing. So if you, are, if you are new to this channel, if you like what you see so far, then please do give us a thumbs up. It really does help my channel to, to grow and I do appreciate all those that do um, follow me on, on this channel um, and if, you, if you're not subscribed yet then please do consider subscribing. I am looking at um, doing a schedule so I'm looking at every Monday and Thursday and on my last video went out on Monday and today being Thursday so that that is a schedule that I can um, I'm quite comfortable with and it also gives me more time to do the um, editing. So rather than do um, the painting and do the filming and, and then just try and get the video out, I wanted to stick to that schedule because it just gives me more time to um, maybe add a bit more quality to my um, editing. Um, so let me know what you think of this video. It really is quite different painting on hot press paper. Um, I'm not sure of the quality of this paper. This is Bockingford hot pressed. It's 140 pound. Um, so I don't really know the, the how good this paper is, um, but it is quite different than cold press and rough, which I do normally use. Um, you can see the watercolor does sit on the surface and I will show you some of the benefits of that as we um, progress through the video. Um, but it, it, it's quite nice to use and you don't really need much of an angle. Um, I do usually have my board at about a 40 degree angle, but for this I'm sort of using less of an angle, uh, perhaps a 30 to 35 degrees. So I don't want too much movement on the uh, of the pigment because it is um, smooth, you've got that surface, the, the watercolour does sit on the surface, so it will move and it'll come down and I don't want a, that to happen too much. Um, so you just got to be aware of that, it's a smooth surface, there's less texture and I know a lot of people use like to use hot press for finer details, um, botanical work, flowers, things like that, and so that's, that's what um, People who like to paint flowers and things like to use this this paper. So just going in there with um, obviously my lightest of the greens. I'm using lemon yellow into my sap green, and so um, that's that's the lightest wash. So I will be covering this with a mix of sap green and French ultramarine as the darker tones, and um, just leaving some of that a slither of that yellowy sort of green um, just to show the sunlight hitting those. Now I do want to show you the palette that I'm using. I'm using the Winsor & Newton um, watercolours. These are professional grade and so I wanted to show you some of the mixing and some of the colours that I'm using because um, I think that's that's just as important as the painting process itself is the um, palette you're using and the way you mix and uh, that's where a lot of the art sort of starts in the palette. And so I've, I'm using for the, for the building, the main buildings, 
It's mostly yellow ochre and a touch of raw sienna and Van Dyke brown. And then I've got a grey mix to the side, which is mostly Payne's grey and French ultramarine. And I wanted to warm that up just a little bit for the um, road coming down. So I just added a touch of um, cadmium red into that. And then just adding these buildings at each either side, which I wanted to sort of stay distant and um, um, not quite, quite light in colour. So I don't want any emphasis on those. They're just more in the background. Um, so that's the look I'm, I'm going for. So the more detail I want in Grosvenor House itself and the shrubbery and greenery around that. So I'm just adding darker mix now, darker colours to the scene. Um, I know a lot of times in watercolour for me, um, I sort of stop prematurely and don't go too dark. So that's something I'm trying to, I'm working on. It's something that I need to um, improve. So I'm just filling in some of the darker areas now. You can see um, using the sap green and French ultramarine. That gives me a darker tone for the uh, shrubbery and the greenery in the scene. So just leaving some of that light, it just gives that nice bit of um, highlight and the sun, sort of indicating the sun. And just keep keep working at it, just adding the darks and not being afraid to um, to go too dark.
here I'm just adding the line of the pavement and it, it's quite nice this paper because you can just um, rub it rub it out quite easily you can see just rub um, downwards with um, some tissue and it's giving me that straight straight line um, and you will see um, how I get rid of um, unwanted cauliflower as well um, this part on the road you can see this stroke here uh, just added too much water to the um, pigment that's already there and you can see the result of the um, cauliflower or back run um, which can be a bit of a nightmare in watercolor I don't usually get those but I think well, I'm going to blame the paper this time because um, I'm not used to the smooth surface but you can see it's it's been there for for some time but that can be fixed quite easily with this paper so it can be quite forgiven as well um, so it's quite easy to to fix that quite easy to lift because the the surface of the paper is smooth the pigment does stay on the surface uh, for that much just that that bit longer so you can fix things like back runs and cauliflowers and all these sort of blooms that may happen in your watercolor so i'm just going to take some um, clean water i'm going to dry my brush and just rub that away and then use my tissue just to dab dab that out i'm not bothered the way it looks now but i'd rather have that than the bloom that appeared so I'm coming really to the end of this um, this demo. Um, I really hope you like this video. Please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.